What is up guys, in today's video I'm going to be spectating one of my friend's games from the recent Twitch Rivals. This is a really stacked zero build tournament with a lot of streamers and pro players in it. Something different, normally I spectate random players and zero build pubs, but this is going to be a tournament game from one of the highest level zero build tournaments there has been at this point in time. Zero build is somewhat new. The open tournaments can be somewhat stacked but these zero build tournaments from what i've or these zero build twitch rivals from what i've seen have been really stacked so i'm going to be going over like the things they do well and it's kind of the differences between zero build competitive and public matches if you guys do enjoy this video remember to find it or find it helpful and informative remember to give it a like subscribe if you'd like to see more and her socials will be linked down in the description below her twitch and youtube check her out she makes great content one of my best friends in the fortnite community so if you guys enjoy my streams and videos, you'll probably enjoy hers as well. Um, with that being said, I will see you guys in the game. Thanks for watching. You almost got that finish. All right, the, so getting uh, right into the game, oh they're landing God, Greasy know. Grove. And one of the differences yeah, between I tournaments them, and I got one, pubs the other one was at me is and that, me especially in a tournament like this, that's just all one lobby, is you can really start oh, to understand like here. where the other players are landing at. The so they know that they're unconned Greasy, but there's been another team like landing on the outskirts of reality that they've fought several times. And one of the things they want to do that ends up not working out is they want to grab a bounty yeah, because then it'll just mark the team closest to them and like, even then they don't the pod, or even though they don't plan on actually going for the bounty Literally. just having the Literally. bounty mark the nearest team to them gives you a lot of information on yeah, what that team's doing whether or not they're going to rotate into you or just uh, like I, I rotate around and not fight you so uh, it ends up not working out because they don't get a bounty but that is one like uh, huge difference know. between comp and pubs yeah. is yeah. Especially in a one okay, okay, lobby tournament, point. you can really start to get a feel nice. for like how the other okay. teams in your lobby are playing and yeah, yeah. where they're landing. Okay. And off spawn fights one. become like really important. But they're unconned at Greasy, so this is really good. There's so much loot in Greasy for it to be unconned is like pretty OP. And they can actually save all of their heals too because of the mushrooms. They could just use the mushrooms and then save heals, which is really nice. Also, there is a Star Wars location on the outskirts of Greasy, which is what they're talking about now. Which is really high value in zero build because it's there's only four things that can spawn in the Star Wars chest. There's shockwaves, chug splashes, rift to goes, and the eleven blaster. And rift to goes are really really good for zero build competitive. For pubs, I really like carrying shockwaves. But in zero build competitive, two of the most important items in the game are rift to goes and port of forts. When the lobby is really stacked, the only way you're going to be able to live is the port of fort, and you have the option to just rift. And then pick a location and just like go there and immediately place a port of fort. So like positioning kind of becomes less important or at least getting early positioning becomes less important when you have rifts and port of forts. And they're actually going to get very good RNG this game. And I think they each have like two port of forts and they have several rifts. So this is like pretty ideal loot as far as like zero build can go. Another thing they're going to do is try to get as much gold they can by breaking the beds and the couches in each building as well as just like opening chests and such that way they can buy ammo from vending machines this is once again another thing that's not going to be probably that big of a deal in public matches but being able to just buy out all the ammo in the vending machines in your area gives you so much excess ammo and for zero build comp that's really huge I see she just got the rift and you'll notice she's only carrying two guns she goes for an smg rather than a shotgun mainly because of the fights that you typically get in in zero build comp aren't super close range if you're playing like opens or like any other part of the tournament it can be but once you get to the final stage most teams that you're fighting you're going to be just fighting at mid range so having just ar smg is pretty beneficial you can also use the smg to spray out builds spray out other players port of fort spray out cover whatever like having the smg just to destroy things can actually be pretty helpful that way you don't have to use your medium ammo to do so because ammo is such a like premium and you'll see later on how much ammo they end up going through because this lobby is really stacked this is like about as stacked as a zero build lobby can be it's just full of like streamers and pro players um so their loot is really good she has two rifts two port of forts she doesn't have the most heals but I think she has the option to buy minis if she really wants to okay. from the vending machine. And I would assume that's what they end up doing. Her teammate's trying to get chug splashes. Two. Two shockwave. Another um, big pot. I'm gonna carry big pots. I can carry, I can carry it. Three but yeah, I, I really like shockwaves for yeah, pubs and zero builds, but for fun. competitive, it's I feel like rift to goes are just much better because you can move the entire team at once with one use whereas like shockwaves unless everybody on the team has shockwaves they're really not that helpful and when you do split away from your team you're probably just going to be dead anyways because of how stacked the lobby is it's really different in public matches but that is one of like the key distinctions between 
I zero build competitive hey, and zero build public jump. matches. Yeah, they're flaring. They're getting flared by a team, and so they're trying to get like grouped here because they they're kind of split on looting. And the main reason why they were able to get split on looting like that is because this is like game four, I think, of the tournament. So they know like what the teams around them are doing. They end up getting flared. They flared. And then I think they just back up. No, it's from it's the team that we killed us. I don't I don't think they end up fighting this team. They're angry. They're. This is a team that they've killed several games in a row, so it's like somewhat unlikely that that team would engage on them. And that's that's kind of goes to say like what I was talking about before with like when you are in the same game over and over again with the same people in a tournament like this, you can really like start to like understand their habits and know what they're gonna do. If you've no, killed a team off spawn several times, the likelihood of them yeah, still trying to fight you isn't that high, unless they're just like full salty about it and they're like willing to ruin their own game just to fight you again. Right, we don't have much healing, so we can't afford to take too much damage this game. Then. Yeah. But we have so much like. Mobile I don't know how they ended up not getting yeah. much heals. They they got really lucky on Rift to goes and mo and uh like Porta Forts. But one of her teammates just said that they don't have much heals, and I find that to be surprising because of the mushrooms. If you're uncon greasy, you could just get the mushrooms and like get heals that way. But as you see, first zone is coming in, and there's still 84 people alive. Yeah. That, that is how stacked this game is, and a lot of competitive like this, a lot of people just end up not fighting. Because there is placement points, which is nice, but also there's so many people that do make it in-game that you're able to mop up so many kills in-game, as you will see in this match, and it's just too risky like the the third party potential is really really high um and so that's why in a lot of times in competitive you see teams just like camping in bushes or camping in houses or whatever they're wasting time because they would like to make it somewhat near in game without having to use their port of forts or use their rifts or anything along those lines and so that's why they're just really not going to do anything the risk of taking a mid-game fight unless you can get the kills quickly and get out really isn't that high because of how populated the lobby is you're really likely to get third partied and like the players are good you know everybody in this lobby is really good so there, there's not really any free kills that you could just like get quickly and get out so the, the fight's gonna go long you're gonna get third partied and that's why a lot of competitive you see just people camping in bushes i know in my videos i've talked about how you know, just camping in bushes all the time isn't good because then you don't really get experience fighting. But this is a completely different circumstance, a like finals competitive match than like public matches are. Like in pubs, you can get away with fighting a bunch and you can actually get better at fighting that way. But in competitive, you just want to make it in game with while being in the best state possible, I feel like. And so that's what they're going to go for here. They're going to try to not fight in game. And if they do fight mid game, they want it to be something where they can like quickly get the kills and get out. They do have the rifts though. They have several rifts. I think Maddie and several of her teammates have rifts. At least one of their players carrying rifts. So if they do get into a bad situation, they can just rift away. But all the players in this lobby are good, so you don't want to force that, you know? Like it isn't. Cool. Yeah, it's unlimited. They're just scoping out the area right now, looking for I teams sure team rotating. Because if a team does rotate yeah, past them, they might be able to get uh, free beams, right or at least beam them to the point where they don't want to fight. Like the like I've already said, the goal is to make it in-game in the best situation you can. You want to have as many heals as you can. You want to have as much mobility as you can. Have as much utility like Porter Forts. Right, let's think about this. Where, where is and right now they're just going to like think about the rotation. They think this top side of zone is going to be really con, so they want to end up going to that bottom side. If we have no team behind us, we just have that Synapse team. So if you just uh, play rally like... Tree, rally Tree is going, I think. I see him gliding and they have a truck. That's the gas station right now. Alright, let him, let him. Yeah. And that's another thing about comp is like on these mushrooms and we can loot it up and then just play right. the just, your up. game can go from like so good to so bad like so yeah, quickly sure, so just like putting well. yourself in the best spot it's possible is going to like win out in the long run yeah. you know maybe you could take that mid range or mid game fight get and get the kills it might be a but, bit, but yeah. you only need it's like not worth the risk there's so much more to lose than there is to gain especially in a tournament format that's like this because i think it's yeah. Only five games or six games. There wasn't very many matches, and if you die out of a match, you get no points that game. And it takes so long to get to any placement points, as you see, because of how populated the lobby is. There's still 80 players remaining, which is a lot. Yeah, hopefully they get like third party. But I have had people ask me that question before, where they talked about like why comp is so campy, and it really just comes down to the risk versus reward with fighting. The the more you fight, the more likely it is you'll get third party. The more resources you're gonna have to burn, and you don't want to make it in game and have no options or no resources you know if you make it in game and you don't have porter forts because you already used them you don't have rip to goes because you already used them and you don't you aren't on the best hp 
Not, not, not you don't have the most ammo. Like things aren't gonna go well for you. And later we double portal for it. And, and so like that, is, that is why comp is so campy, um, especially in situations like this. The cash cups can be a little different. Like opens are oh, usually geez, uh, more kill heavy and no, even that finals means to an extent to buy chunker, that team is more that, kill that heavy. They're, on, they're like buy chunkers yeah, like over here. That probably is a synapse team though. We should probably start going soon. And this a team just on, died in the kill feed and since her teammate knows where that yeah, team lands, like, he was able to predict that there's yeah. probably people yeah. like near Rocky fighting. Wait, That's what they were just saying. We just want the zone to kick back so no one can sneak up behind us. Yeah. And Storm Surge is a thing in this. So if you guys yeah, don't know what Storm Surge is, it's basically a mechanic in games that are really populated that forces you to do damage to players. It's kind of meant to combat some of the campiness of this. But that just kind of becomes part of comp. Like people have Surge routes been t built into their rotation and they know where they got to get Storm Tags. So they are 23 below Storm Surge. They need, I think, 11 people to die on this zone. So if the lobby gets down to 70 players remaining, Storm Surge won't happen. But if this lobby stays healthy for the next minute, 20 seconds, and they don't do damage, they'll start getting damaged by the storm. Fortunately for them, 23 damage is not a lot. That's a few tags of the AR. But you see it's going up because storm surge threshold is relative to the amount of damage done by the lobby itself. So if other teams have done a lot of damage and you've done no damage, the, the amount you need is higher. But as teams die, it kind of changes. It's a weird mechanic, but basically you just need to put yourself in spots to get tags if the lobby isn't going to die. They have 53 seconds and they need seven people to die. Otherwise, Surge isn't going to happen. She ends up getting a tag. Now they're only 12 below, which definitely puts them in a much better situation. Now they only need one AR tag and they're above. And the more above you are is nice because as teams die, the numbers changes. From what I've seen in zero build matches, I don't think there's really second or third zone Surge. It's mainly just a first zone thing. But you see now they're above on Surge. Um, but other yeah, teams are going to be go looking for Surge tags right. too. So it just makes it really rough when Maybe Surge is a thing. Know. Just watch our back. They're, they're pretty sure side. they're alone on this side of zone yeah, just based on like the fact that they were able to rotate in. There might be a team behind that mountain, we but it, it's really unlikely just based on is it, is it everything else that has happened on this match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah see, we just need a little bit. We don't even, didn't even need it, but... Yeah. It's good to be up. And as we said, kids back in they're place. just trying to make it as late in they're the like game as they can without expending too much. And that yeah. zone was good. They, they've they looted their POI. They, they have multiple rifts, multiple yeah. portal ports, and they really haven't lost anything yet. So they're in a really good spot here. Get to me. We chill here. Okay. And I think this, what's coming up is a really good call. They're, they're going to see two teams fighting over nice. here. And yeah, they do look for third-party tags, but they don't overcommit to it. And I feel like a lot of people would overcommit to this fight that's upcoming. Up on this bush, maybe. Right now they're just kind of calling out where they think people can be, but that team might, across does end up fighting. Like shit on the just... Yeah, yeah, over there. They one. end up getting sniped yeah. from mm -hmm. Butter Barn. You see, there's people all over the place, and that's why fighting is so dangerous. If they overextend on a fight, then that team can what, third party can them. Yeah, but there's a team low ground in those bushes, that's and then also to her right, there's a team camping in a port of fort yeah, holding that team. It, this can break, but. See the team in front of them. There's a team in that port of fort, and what they decide to do is, if the team from the port of fort drops down, yeah, like, uh, they could rift uh, like up to the port of fort cause... and take that height, and then get the free kills. And I think that's a really good play. It ends up not happening, but I think that's the best type thing they can do. If this team leaves the port of fort and goes down, then they could rift and then have height on that port of fort, and it would be a lot of free beams. But that's just something that ends up not coming to fruition. But I, I think that decision making was still really solid. Uh, but nothing really ends up happening here to my not, to my memory. I ended up watching this game yesterday before I decided to make this video. This is the hardest part of the game though, I think. Like early game is usually pretty simple. You just loot your POI, you kill the people that are there. Late game can be complicated, but usually just rotating around what zone is. Mid game is like you have to somehow make it to zone without using too many resources and without getting in too many fights. And they do have a team oh, here. We pushed this. Sneaking right, behind right, them. One of her teammates luckily saw them sneaking and started frying them. They're getting they're getting we're, getting, we're getting looked at by another team. Um, but as I talked about before, they get third partied really hard. The moment they start fighting at all, they got shot at by like two different teams. The team they fried ends up rifting, so they recycle this rift and go to zone. Just land on me, I'm gonna pull the foot on this. And see, like I was talking about before. You can just rift, land somewhere in port of fort, and then you're fine. And like rift port of fort combo is so good for zero build competitive oh. watch out watch out west play on the inner so we don't get heavy snipe down yeah, yeah. and this is also something i've I seen them do a far. lot i've watched a few tournaments she played in the nick a30 tournament with opt the day prior to this one and they i think they got like top 10 in that and they end up getting fifth in the switch rivals but 
Since the Rift, port fort combo is so OP, and in-game can be so volatile with just a bunch of teams frying each other, sometimes they'll throw the port fort sit in the bottom of it, and wait for zone to pop, and then Rift, and then go to zone, and then put another port fort down there. When you have Rifts and port forts to burn, it's actually really, really helpful. A lot of teams will sit on the top of their port fort and shoot at everything, and then they just end up getting focused. And if you end up getting focused in a lobby like this, you're probably going to die. As you're about to see coming up here, there's teams fighting on this bridge. And they're all really good players, but when you have several really good teams shooting at you with the AUG, you're going to go down. Um, so you do want to pick up kills when you can, but forcing the kills too much is something that a lot of teams struggle with, I think. Like, a lot of people feel like they have to get every kill or shoot at everything possible. But if you make it in-game, people are going to be shambles enough and you'll be able to get free kills. Another thing they do really well is whenever a team rifts, they try to fry that team. Because a team rifting can be rifting just because they want a good spot to go to. And if they see a team fully distracted in a port fort and no one's shooting at them, they might just land on that team. So anytime you see people rift in a competitive setting, you want to fry the rifters. That way they're less inclined to land on you. And it could be free kills as well. Because oftentimes when people are rifting, they're rifting because they're weak. Like people are either rifting looking for positioning or they're rifting to get away from a fight. And if people are rifting to get away from a fight you could get free kills because they're so weak. And that definitely does happen in this game. And as you see with the visual audio, everything is going crazy. But there's still 45 players left in this zone, which is pretty wild for zero builds. And that's mainly just due to the port of forts. I feel like if port of forts weren't in the game, lobbies would die out way faster. Um, but, yeah. Port of forts allow teams to exist for much longer periods of time, similar to how builds did in comp. Like, so many people could live in comp because of the builds. And she just cracked one of those players' shields. This is like I was talking about the player's weak when they're rifting. And so they're pretty much a free kill out of the air if you're able to hit a few bursts on them. And so many people are going to be so shambles and trying to get away from fights that it's just, it's so many free kills endgame. That's how, like, every zero build tournament I've seen is gone. Like, the team that puts themselves in the best spot just mops up so many kills in game. You could have zero kills off your drop if you make it to end game and you're in a decent position as far as, like, port of forts and rifts and heals and all that stuff go. You can get so many free kills. Like, look at, look at all these people here. These are really good players, by the way. You might be like, oh my god, why is he standing out in the open there? But, like, these are all really good players, but there's just so much going on that it, you're able to get free kills like that. A player ends up coming behind them. This is like sketchy. They drop down to kill that guy and they do get the kill really easily because the guy was weak. But it is sketchy. Look at how many people just died on that on that zone though. There was 40 people I think or 45 before that rotation. And now there's 24. They end up getting sniped out so they throw another port of fort. And that's like one of the benefits of having so many is that you can just keep throwing them. Under, 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 right here. 50. All right, all right, focus mm, up, focus like all, whenever any guys, team fights, they end up getting focused, focus, and yeah. then you could just like third party so, guys, AR them. They end up getting half their yeah. zone here, which we is really, really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah. This is really OP. They're in the no, best no, no, spot no, no, here, no, 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 no. and they have so many extra port forts to burn. But one of the bad things about getting zone in zero build is that you get hard focus. Because there's yeah, so many people later. that have to rotate right, in the right, zone, right. you can well, get can a lot of kills, but you can also, uh, one team here, shockwaving uh, onto you can, can just like hard grief uh, your uh, game. You have two, have two, or two, boogie right. bombs, whatever. Yeah, there, there is a few like items in the game that definitely allow people to like really change the tide of things. When you have a spot that's too good and you draw attention to yourself repetitively, like your game can go south really fast in Zerbo. They're trying to fry so they can run in. We gotta stop them. Wait, Still there. 20 players remaining. Another rifting, team rifted, rifting, so they're gonna have to shoot out these rifters. And like before, these people are probably shambles. And really desperate. That's our kill, that's our kill. So they could be free kills out of the air. Oh, he's fucking doing the clip. He's got the god movement. Oh my god, he's got that. It's Crip! Ah, uh, Crip, you got the god movement. Like we talked about before at the start of the game, how much ammo they had. Look at how much ammo she's down to now. She's down to 60 bullets. Like you just go through ammo so fast when you're frying teams like this. But when you do get the right spot, you just mop up so many kills. They would like stand in the zone with their more port forts and they still have more. In the air. And you see how messy this game is. Everyone else is so shambles because they're in a bad spot. The team in zone with port fort just gets to fire everything. It's so busted. Careful, watch, watch out the port Watch out the port I'm almost, I'm almost out of ammo. 
Uh, the ammo concerns are very real though. And this has triggered me so much, yeah. but someone drops her ammo and she doesn't yeah. get it. Get it Just because there's so much going on we play in these moments. Like, right. It might not seem yeah, like as much when you're not playing it, yeah. and you're just watching, but like... Oh, no, 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 no. We should go up. We when you're in this type of situation, yeah. like, it, there's so much going on. Get on your ass! Alright, it's fine. Just We're down to oh, five, 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 six opponents five, remaining. Five, More people dead. rift. I'm out. Only a few teams. They out. have really good position because yeah, they, they have they so missed. many portaports. Oh, but, oh, no. like I said before, I'm up, I'm somebody shockwaves up I'm and I'm up still. there's right. not much you can do. I'm fine, I'm fine. She rifts, which watch. is a really good play. She gets herself at its own. She's staying up right now just because she doesn't know like what the situation is down there. I have a rift on my body. I'm going to try to give you. Both of her teammates end up going down. No. She, she has to land at his own here, and this seems sketchy, but I think this is a really good play. Uh, it ends up not working, but I think this is the best play she can make. So there's one team height in her port of fort There's a team low ground, and it seems like they're starting to fight. So she rifts and tries to land height because at this point in time, pretty much the only way she's going to win this game is if those two teams fight. And she puts herself in a decent spot to third party it. Whereas where she was, wasn't in zone and she wasn't going to get shots on it. And it seemed like the people height were dropping, but it turns out that they weren't. And the people low ground weren't really pressured at all. And so they just sat height and killed her. But I do think that was the best possible play she could make. It, it seems like it doesn't, it seems like not a good play. It seems really risky. But when you're in such a bad spot like that, both your teammates are dead. People took your height. You don't have zone. There's not really much you can do. And the team low ground ends up chopping the team height out. They break all the bottoms of that port of fort And then the team bottom won. So if that team height was more aware of the fact that that team was chopping them, they would have dropped on them to kill them. And then her landing height would have probably actually won her the game because that would have been a really messy play on the bottom there. But that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys find it helpful, informative, something different. Usually I spectate random players and pubs, but today we spectated a zero build tournament if you guys found it helpful informative remember to give it a like subscribe if you'd like to see more and i will see you guys in the next video thanks for watching